All right, folks, God bless you and welcome to This Is It. Before the fire. Okay, so guys, tonight, <clears throat> this is just what's on my heart. It's in my spirit. Um, I want to just talk to you. I just want to connect with everybody. I want to connect with all of us on the same level that we're all in the same host bodies. We all struggle with the same problems. Um, being in a host body comes with its own unique set of realities. Some good, some bad, some horrible. Um, I got saved in 2002. And after I got saved, I had a moment where... I truly, truly understood and I was able to completely connect to the full understanding of what had been done for me. I know a lot of people talk about Jesus and, you know, a lot of it's kind of fluffy religiosity stuff. I've seen so much of it over the years. It's it's just mind boggling. But... <clears throat> I know that I have a limited time here on this earth now, and I know it's coming to a close. It has to. Where the world's at and what's going on, there's no doubt that we're coming to the end. There's no doubt. Anyway, and so I would not want to miss the opportunity while I'm here, you know, while I'm here to express to the Lord, to Jesus, my gratitude um, to tell y'all what he did for me and the connection that became so real that everything else changed. The whole world changed. And I was no longer of the world anymore. It was the most bizarre thing to be in the world, but no longer of the world. And then usually when you're in the world, you'll have a best friend, you know, or you'll have people you call to lean on. Some people, you know, my mom, I used to be able to talk to my mom to some degree, even though we fought like cats and dogs. I st could still talk to my mom about stuff. Um, you know, but we all have s usually someone. And um, at that point in my life, when I got saved, everything was taken away from me. I mean, the world rejected me. It's not that it was taken away. It's that the world itself and the people that were my friends and the people I loved and cared about, all of a sudden, they just, they rejected me and I was, I was no longer acceptable or they no longer wanted to be around me. And I wasn't being preachy. I wasn't like, oh, you've got to see this. No, it just, it was just, I was something different. So I no longer was able to have like that fellowship, you know, where you're buddy buddies and they're like talking about, you know, this naked girl or drinking this or doing that. And, you know, they could tell that it no longer worked for me. So anyway, I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you and to connect with you and I wouldn't want to let the time pass where I knew I had the opportunity to thank Jesus while I'm here in this host body before I leave here. I don't want to miss the opportunity. So anyway, so <clears throat> this evening it just, I don't know, it was just inside of me. I just, I was like, I need to do this. So anyway, let me tell you a very quick, super quick little testimony about what happened. Right after I got saved, uh, the wolves came in like a pack. My family, everybody turned against me instantly. My house was seized. My cars were seized. Everything that I had was paid for, paid off in cash because of my sunglass company. Um, but that didn't stop uh, the wolves because I had put it in my my parents' name. So, 
you know, Marina didn't try and make her move. My dad was like, hey, you got to you gotta put your stuff in my name that way. And Marina tries to come in and take all your stuff. She was the girl that purposely orchestrated getting pregnant in order to catch me. She set a snare. She literally admitted, yes, that's what I did. Well, that's evil. You don't, you don't purposely, purposely weaponize your genitalia to capture somebody that they have to be with you. I mean, that's, that's sick. That's demented. So anyway, quick, very quickly, everything happened so fast. My head was spinning. Everything was taken away from me. My dad sees my house. They took my cars. All my belongings were just taken away from the house, put in a storage unit. I was left homeless, destitute. Everything was taken at once. It was it was beyond my uh, belief. I was like, what in the hell is going on? I, I was trying to call my parents. What are you doing? Have you lost your freaking minds? And I, I was just like, what are y'all? I mean, it was insanity. Anyway, so I was walking down a street called Hildebrand because I went from several cars that were paid off to no car. Uh... I went from a house and everything I had available to me, you know, financial money, everything I had was gone. So, you know, I borrowed some money from a friend of mine a little bit, and I'm not talking like a lot of money, just enough to be able to get through a couple of days. And um, I was walking down the street named Hildebrand. I had my cell phone and I was walking. I'll still remember I was wearing, I used to wear cowboy boots. I used to have snakeskin boots. That's what I wore, snakeskin boots and jeans. And I was walking down Hildebrand trying to process what had happened to me. I was like, what? what is going on? My own parents have turned against me. They stole my house. They left me homeless. They sided with a psychopath. And I'm going, Lord, what's going on? So I'm walking down the street by myself on a pretty busy street called Hildebrand. And I'll never, ever forget. I looked over and there was a marquee at a mom and pop used car lot. Just a little, you know, little teeny used car lot. Maybe they had 20 cars. Really cheesy. And I looked over and I was just asking God, what's going on? I knew that I had the Holy Spirit because of the way I had gotten saved and I just said, what's going on? I don't understand any of this. And I looked over and the marquee at this mom and pop car lot, it said Psalm 27. It said Psalm 27. And when I looked at it, I had a spiritual response to it. I was very new in my walk within the first couple of weeks. And, and when a when I saw it, I knew that somehow the Lord had orchestrated me being there to ask him what's going on. I can't explain it. I can now. Back then I couldn't. I know how the Lord works now. I know your comings and your goings. I know when you rise up. I know when you lay down. A man may devise his plan, but the Lord orders his steps. I didn't know all that, <laughs> and, but I knew somehow while I'm walking down the street in my cowboy boots, destitute, realizing that cowboy boots aren't the best way to get around anymore because <laughs> I was used to having a car and now I'm walking long distances in cowboy boots and I'm trying to just process and I'm like, what in the world? Psalm 27. So I got out my cell phone and I called Lou, who was my girlfriend at the time. And I called her up and I said, hey, would you read me Psalm 27? Okay, I'm going to play Psalm 27 for you. And then I want you to think that this happened in 2002. Psalm 27 was read to me over the phone in 2002. Here it is, 2021. The Lord has let me solve the mystery of everything, the entire world, the host body system, the serpent, 
race, their language, how to read their language, how to understand their language, the symbology. He's let me understand all of that. He gave me the open scroll. He literally allowed me to understand the word of God. I'm going to read you Psalm 27, and then I'm going to follow it up with what he's put on my heart. And it's an encouraging message. Uh, I want everyone to have what I have. I want... I want everyone to have what I have. I have the Lord. I have everything. And I want you to understand it. Maybe in a way that you've never understood it before. So... I'm going to try and convey that to you uh, in this little short presentation. Okay. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 28 Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors give them after the work of their hands, render to them their desert. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them, and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also, and lift them up forever. So, yeah. So when I was walking down Hildebrand in 2002, after I'd been converted... I was manifesting supernatural abilities and gifts. Everything had been taken away from me. Everything of this world 
um, all the things that the people of this world want. Um, and I saw Psalm 27 on a, on a marquee, a billboard, basically. Um, mob marquee out in front of that used car dealership. And as Lou read that to me, as she read Psalm 27 to me, I knew it was the Lord speaking directly to me. The Spirit inside me bear witness to it. I want you to think about this. When that was going on, and I was hearing those words, it was hard to believe that what had happened to me was actually happening to me. And it didn't seem like there was any real reason. It, it didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And when I heard these words, I'll never forget it. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. I had lost everything at that moment. Um, I went from, you know, the sunglass company and everything that came with it. Lots and lots of money, cars, doing whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. Notoriety, pro sky surfer, all that stuff. Um, but I knew that when I heard those words that a supernatural spirit, a source was telling me he knew that my mother and my father had had totally ditched me. And that he was going to take care of me now. Um, as a parent. Um, so now here we are in 2021. Um, he's let me sh show the world that the Vatican's a snake. I've been able to show everybody Genesis 1 was not the Lord God forming man. He taught me the word of God in a way that I've never seen anyone understand it. Um, it's nothing I did. It's just what he had planned for me. Um, so anyway, hang on one sec, guys. I just, just give me a sec. Okay, so as I'm looking down the barrel, so to speak, of the end of the world, and I know that the end of the world's here, okay? And I don't know if y'all understand fully, or I don't know how anyone could understand it the way I do, having been, you know, the conduit, the reception source of the data. So it's got to be different for me than it is for you, but still. Um, so... I know the end is here. And I want I want Jesus to know while I'm here how grateful I am. How truly grateful I am. I know that we all share a common bond. Um, if you're a Christian, the world's rejected you. Jesus said, if they hate me, they'll hate you. 
and I've gotten a real dose of that and it's okay um, but to know that way back then he knew he he was gonna pick me up and get me through this there's no way to get through this I couldn't have gotten through this it would have been so very easy to just end it all you know very easy but he showed me how important it was to to keep going and that it wasn't any longer about me it was about the well-being of others is the reason I needed to persevere he made sure that there were little children involved in my life because I I would I probably would have ended it if if I didn't have to take care of little ones and I knew they needed me um, but now that time is over and I've gone through <laughs> the fire I've been through the fire of refinement um, he taught me who he is he showed me who he is in, in his word the revelation of the word is the revelation of him so the more he revealed the word to me the more I knew knew him and um, I'll never feel worthy of it it's a good thing we don't have to be worthy of it um I want the world to know that Jesus is the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the one that was willing to do for me what nobody else was willing to do. And he was willing to stick with it, with me, through it, through all of it. And there is no way to make it through it. And, um, I don't know how to give to everybody what I have. So, the best I can do is to kind of point you at the door, to show you what he's taught me, you know, to show, well, show you all this amazing information and to give a witness and to give a testimony the Bible says you are my witnesses declares the Lord that I am he there is no other there's no other there's no other God besides him when I came out to do this I'd already told Corey I was like man I gotta go do this I can feel it I don't know maybe the ends here quick I hope so just for my sake and maybe that's selfish but it has to start sometime so I told Corey I gotta go you know do this and I know that he knows everything. When I came out here to do this video, my uh, my computer updated. I have my updates off. My computer should not update at all. I've turned them off because it's like the enemy uses it in a way to mess up what I'm doing. So I came out and my computer was on a completely different screen. I was like, what's going on? 
and I tried to hard, you know, I did a hard reset. And um, let me show you. I took a picture of my screen. So there's a there's a picture of my screen. It shows a house. Let's see. It's just a rock. It's a dome rock. There it is. With a house on top, a little teeny house. And it's saw there it is. And it's by itself on top of this rock. It's like he knew I was going to do this video. Let me show you. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Guys, I'm, I've never even seen this. I've never even, I've never even seen this picture before. I'll set his head upon a rock. I'll set me. I'm sorry. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted above mine enemies, round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear me, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy on me also and answer me. When thou saidest, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, I will seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will lift me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Imagine, you know you're coming out here, and I know I was going to go over Psalm 27, and on my screen, my entire screen, is a little teeny house on the very top of just a rock a little mountain all by itself mm. so the time of trouble is here it's arriving right now I know y'all know it is they're mixing the iron with the clay we're the clay they're putting graphene in everybody the enemy is Relentless, evil is taking over and will take over. That's what the end of the world is, the takeover by evil. The host body system has been taken over. The abomination that causes desolation. I'm bearing witness to it. That's what I've been doing. It's the destruction of the temple. So now that time is arriving and like I said, before this before this happens I just want the Lord to know how grateful I am. There's no words for the gratitude. It's been very difficult, but honestly, I wouldn't change it at all. Um, I know the Bible says that we'll cast our crowns before him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine getting to cast your crown of life before Jesus? If the, if the cross isn't personal for you, if it's not a personal thing, 
then how do you how do you understand who he is? It's this was a man that was God that took your punishment, that took my punishment, and I earned every bit of my own punishment, my behavior, my choices. It's very convenient in this world to play the blame game. If you go look at the hieroglyph of Akhenaten and Nefertiti, the one that the Lord let me decrypt, look at all the children. They're all pointing at each other. It's kind of odd. It's like they're the blame game from the beginning. The first thing Eve said is the serpent beguiled me. Anyway, when I, uh, when I took this to heart, this understanding, when I really took it to heart, I wrote it down. I want to read it and I want to leave it here. And I'm not trying to be all mushy-wushy because that's just not my thing. But I want everyone to understand. I want the Lord to know that I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of him or the gospel. Do you know how many people try and make you ashamed of loving Christ? Do you know how sick that is? To, to try and make you ashamed to be a Christian. Look at society today. How they try and shame you. This whole transgender agenda. That's what this whole world's all about. The future is female. That's the energy that's taking over. That's the cannibalistic energy. Don't be ashamed of Christ. How could you be ashamed of someone that was willing to be publicly murdered for you? So, here's a little exercise I thought. Can you imagine right now Right now, authorities show up to your house and they say, hey, we have a, a death warrant for you. It's signed by the prince of this world. He says you have to die a violent death. And they march you outside and they're going to violently murder you in public. And someone steps in and says, wait, how about I'll let you kill me so they can have their life. I'll take their punishment. It's that simple. That's what he did. So if it's not personal, I don't know how it can't be personal. I see people that say they're Christians. To them it's a word. This is my best friend. It's my best friend that when everybody else was not there, nobody was there. My best friend picked me up and he got me through it. He got me through it. I wouldn't have ever believed I was going to make it through this. I'm going to put a picture on the screen. I'm just going to play the Passion of Christ at very slow speed. Hopefully there won't be a codec issue. And um, I want you to try what I did. I put myself in the crowd. Because, see, if Jesus really died for your sins, didn't you crucify him? 
It's a yes or no answer. I mean, if he died for your sins, shouldn't it be personal? Shouldn't it be like you, you got to see your best friend walked outside and violently murdered? We're supposed to take communion to remember what he did for us. That's what communion is. The Catholic Church has perverted it into something horrifying. But communion is when we're supposed to get together and take a piece of bread and eat it. He said, this is my body that's been given for you. Take it and eat it. And do this in remembrance of me. How often does anybody do that? How often does anyone think about what he did? I want y'all to remember what he did. I don't want everybody just to remember the Vatican's a snake. The only reason you can see the Vatican is a snake is because of what he did on that cross. So I could have that information to give it to you. It's not from me. It's from him as a gift through me to you. Everything I've done, it's not from me. It's from him. He used me to give it to you. I appreciate the gratitude and the, the thank yous. But y'all should really thank him. I should give the glory to him always. But I, I know I know everybody means well. And I appreciate it. I do. But he's the one that did all this. He's the one that made it available. He's the one that opened the door. Okay. I want to read this because I want it to be here. I want him to know I'm not ashamed of him. I'm not ashamed of sitting here and crying because of what he did for me. I'm broken hearted for the world right now. They don't know how bad it's going to be. Have you noticed how the world tries to blame things on God? not being unjust, or not being just. Oh, how could he do this? How could he leave a little child to do this? The part they omit is Genesis 1 is Elohim said, let us create man in our vain show. We're all here because we chose to be here. That's reality. That's the part the churches haven't told you. The sins you committed, you committed. He came to fix what you did. We're the prodigal sons. We're the ones that asked for our inheritance. We're the ones that left home and wasted our substance. You know what the word substance is? I exist. Go look it up. Go look it up. They wasted their substance. I exist on riotous living and prostitutes. Yeah, that's a tough one, right? So he didn't do it. We did it. And if you ever blame anything on God, you're a lunatic. He gave you your soul. And we went and sold it into slavery ourselves. Just remember that. Okay? Don't let some idiot preacher tell you otherwise. If any preacher ever tells you Genesis 1 is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're evil. Okay. I'm going to try and read this. And then uh, I'm going to leave this going on the screen. So everybody can see what it costs. Okay. This letter is much a confession as it is a testimony. It's a letter I wrote to God. Oh, my Lord, my God. Deal with my rebellious heart, Father. 
deal with me, Lord, at the foot of the cross and the trail of blood and agony that beckons the heart and the soul of each one that have been called to you. God, please deal with my rebellious heart. My rebellious heart, it saw others as the reason for failure. My heart blamed others for its own unhappiness. My heart accused others of what itself was already guilty of. My rebellious heart lied to itself in every manner and in every justification. There my heart stood confidently at the end of your long torturous walk watching the one carrying the cross. It was my heart that pointed its finger and accused you who were burned with the cross. As you were nailed to that cross and lifted up, my rebellious heart hurled insults and accusations and took self-righteous gratification in the illusion as if you were the one that was being condemned. And then out of perfect grace and perfect love, the miracle. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Jesus prays for the forgiveness of the ones that are his enemies, especially me. He endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. The only joy he could get was from making us whole again. Oh, my Lord, my God. Your perfect child looks with compassion at those that hate him. He offers to take their place. The only joy was in the forgiveness. Then the miracle of all miracles happens. Those that had condemned themselves are redeemed. The one that was sinless becomes sin. The ones that were evil become sinless. And the ones that were stained become spotless. And the one that was spotless is stained in the blood of the sins of the rebellious. The prisoners are released from dungeons that they themselves have created. The blind are given their sight back and the author of life bows his head in submission to the will of his Father in heaven. Jesus, thank you for letting me receive you. And I honestly and truly humble myself before you and I'm sorry and I confess that I'm many and all of those that sought to destroy you. Thank you for loving my soul with an unfailing commitment. I'm sorry that I haven't praised you every day of my life. I wish I would have. The battle must be fought in the human heart, and I know that we only win when we surrender, only when we surrender our hearts completely to you and the sacrifice that you made to redeem us. Now your words ring out like pure, unadulterated truth. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Forgive me, Lord, for ever harboring anger and unforgiveness in my heart. You love my heart with an unfailing commitment, even though I was your enemy. Father, thank you. Jesus, bless you. 
You purchased my soul and my freedom through your agony. Somehow, somehow, please let me show others. Please help me show others the same love that you've shown me. And thank you for what you did. I just want to come home. <laughs> Please help us all endure to the end. Please. For those people that are left behind. Please help them bear up. And know that you love them no matter what happens. No matter what comes, you still love us. And the cross is the proof of your love to us. And we never have to doubt it, regardless of our own behavior. <laughs> our behavior is not a reflection of your love. God have mercy on this world. I know that the time is close. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So my question to the world is this. <laughs> How could this not be personal? <laughs> if we did it, if I did it, if I received it, How could it not be personal? <laughs> uh, I look 
can say is this, if it's not personal, <laughs> then how could it be real? Ali Ali income free. <laughs> Thank you.